Welcome to the Locker Room. International Week rolls on and so too do the top World Cup qualifying games on offer here on Be In Sports tomorrow. Not only do we have round 16 of the South American qualifiers, but we also have the US's crucial game against Honduras, which has suddenly become a lot more important. And speaking of important, I have some VIPs on the panel with me tonight. Ray Hudson and Thomas Rungan are with me and Phil Shane and Gary Bailey. Now, tomorrow night's game in San Pedro Sula is a match both sides need to win. The two sides are both third in the table, but the U.S. do have a hefty goal advantage thanks to that 6-0 thrashing of Honduras back in March. It's a game that neither side can afford to lose, though, Phil Shane. And normally in those situations, you would say that's the one that's going to come out as a draw, which doesn't necessarily hurt the U.S., but they can't afford to go out playing for a draw because if they lose, Panama maybe gets some points. They could find themselves fifth heading into the final uh, round of qualification. So uh, this is a difficult match for them. It's something that they, they made for themselves, though, and now they have to prove that they are worth, uh, going to the, worthy of going yeah. to the World Cup. And it's something okay, they should be able to qualify easily. If you look at the teams around them, it's, it's not the, the toughest ask. We were just chatting about that in terms of, of other places in the world. Like in Africa, only the top team actually goes through. This is a relatively easy task for them. So they've still got matches. They've got Panama at home, TNT away. They should make it. But if they don't, wow, that'll it, be a disaster. Is the too easy of a format? Does it allow complacency to set in? In some maybe? ways, because I think that was really what we saw. And, I, I mean, as the players, they would know better. Uh, but they seem to come out thinking, we're at home. The pressure's on them. Let's just take it easy. And then they kept getting hit in the mouth, and they didn't know what to do, sometimes literally. Uh, I, I think that that was the wake-up call, though. And this is one of the reasons why they brought Bruce Arena back, is when things start to get rocky, he knows how to calm things down. I'm not quite sure he has the horses, though, once they get to Russia, if they do. I mean, we have to remember the work that Bruce has done so far, Ray. It's been brilliant and a big turnaround since he came in. He's been marvellous and, you know, winning every game. And uh, the, the, the performance of the team has been, I wouldn't say exponentially better, but you can see the, 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 the team spirit. You can see the cohesion in a lot of the games. It wasn't there in this game, and everybody could see it. The big names didn't live up to the billing. Uh, the, the, the standards that have been set by Pulisic in uh, Dortmund uh, weren't there uh, in this game, uh, in a passionate game. And it wasn't as if the crowd were completely against the United States. It was more or less 60-40, would you say, Thomas? It was a very volatile atmosphere, but certainly the Costa Ricans brought their fans and really turned it on. It always was going to be a tricky game. Yes. You know, we looked mm. at the whole schedule, and we knew this one in particular. There's eight guys, by the way, that started for Costa Rica that beat Uruguay. Uranium scored against Uruguay, that yeah. beat Italy, that won the group of death in 2014 with the yeah. Keylor Navas yeah. body against the place in, in La Liga as well. Without Yetlin and also Brooks, you got two very important components, you know, in the back that we really missed. And, and, and you didn't and have that chemistry at the back. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was that the first time that that back four had played together yeah. as well, you know, against but this wasn't team this that what, took the advantage. Isn't this what Jurgen Klinsmann used to get criticised for, though? Sure. Putting out an untested two in a must-win game, uh, putting Pulisic out wide on the right, Nagby in the middle where he's not that comfortable. Well, that's and, a good game. Uh, again, Bruce Arena admitted, and he was one of the first, and that's something that Klinsman didn't do, that he got out coached on this night. Mm -hmm. And I think you have to give full credit to what Costa Rica was able to do. Right. Yeah. Now what do you do? And, and can I just mention one man in particular you have to credit? Kayla Nevis. Absolutely. Made a crucial save at 1-0, where if that goes in, it makes a save with a knee and then a hand. It makes another one a few minutes after that at 1-0. That would have been 1-1, different game. And then Jeff Cameron tries to play some sort of crazy ball out from defense, gives the ball away, 2-0 game over so yeah. uh, you know credit to costa rica there as thomas says they're a good side they're well, we well organized brian ruiz as well wasn't he useful up front yeah. in terms of holding the ball up so and, and there's not a false sense of security believe me they, they we understand the urgency of this getting to russia yeah. but yeah. 14 games unbeaten right, right? Yeah. Yeah. look, no, look true, at france true. france just hammers you know netherlands and then ties luxembourg sooner or later you knew you're gonna have one game where you're gonna be off hope yeah. to get a tie maybe yeah. you get a loss and yeah. now we've got to show which we will, you know, 
this team will come back. I know this team, I know Arena, this team will come back. And there's no doubt in my mind that we can, if we perform well, yep. get three points. Yeah. Okay, going Honduras. back to your original question and going back to another former U.S. coach, a guy you know quite well in Bob Bradley, talking about how easy and how forgiving this region is. It is. I mean, they could lose yeah. this match yeah. and still qualify. Bradley and Egypt, what was it, like 11 in a row victories, and he loses one match, yeah. right? and they don't yeah. qualify. Yeah, is the nation yeah. pro progressing as it should be, soccer-wise? Um, yeah, I don't think so. Um, and may maybe you'll feel different. And it, you know, if you take Pulisic out, that it's the old guard that holds it together. It's, it's Tim in goals. It's Clint Dempsey coming on doing things. It's Bradley. I'm not seeing any real exciting talent other than Pulisic coming through. And the States need that. And, and if you look at Pulisic, he's not been coached by the States. He's been coached by Germany. And by Dortmund, yeah. so, so got his kids coming. You got to start here. Coming we, to start here. Wait, 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 with, there, with all due respect, in the picture, though. guys. Yeah. With all due yeah. respect, okay. We, come, not we, Bruce Arena comes in zero points after two games. All yeah. right. Yeah. What is the mission? Get to Russia. Are we going to integrate five 18-year-olds? Absolutely not. Yeah. Are you going to rely on the quarter? He knows to get there without a doubt. Do we have three players right now in the Bundesliga that consistently start? Sure. Hachi, right? Do we have somebody Benfica? Yeah. Do I'll we have somebody Thomas. at Fiorentina? Do we have three players in the EPL all 18, 19, 21 years old? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I think the future after 2018 is yeah. going to be very bright and if we get the World Cup in 2026, watch out. But, yeah, and but why are they not uh, in a playing now and on the subs? Tim Chandler that good. starts in the Bundesliga, one of the best right backs. If you believe the ratings, Bruce doesn't like him. And there are perhaps some legitimate reasons. Timmy Chandler, maybe his personality, maybe his commitment to the team. Denny Williams is now playing as a defensive midfielder in the Premier League. Can't even get a sniff. Then, then and this is a team that desperately games. needed. Okay. And again, we can pick and choose, and I agree with you 100%. The talent is there. But the job for the United States shouldn't just be to get to Russia. It the, should be to do something once you get there. The job of the head coach of the U.S. national team is not to develop players True. in important games. Here you go, 17-year-old. Yeah. I've seen you a few times. Mm -hmm. You're pretty talented. Come on, guys. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the under-17 coach, under-20 coach. Their yeah. responsibility to say to Bruce Arena, you are ready. Let's make the step yeah, right but now. No one's it picking on Bruce Arena. No, no. to bring those players in. No one's picking in. on well, Bruce Arena. Oh, okay, you are. Well, I'll let well, you that's pick why. That's why I'm going to defend But again, Chandler is a veteran. Danny Williams is a veteran yep. and sometimes his hands are tied for example Dom Dwyer I think would have been a perfect choice yep. except Dwyer hasn't scored since he made the move he is as cold as ice Phil, you had Josie Phil, Altador you have Phil, Bobby Wood Phil answer me one question yes. how well did Denny Williams all the placement do on the on the Klinsman did they well when they lost two games for nothing Costa Rica no, absolutely and I agree, not the last, the last time right. they played in Honduras would Chandler you take him over Yetlin would no. you take him over Pulisic would you take him over mm -hmm. Nagby? Would you take him over Fabian? You say no, 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 and no. Come on. Yeah, good for the needed, bench? We Without a, a doubt. Defensive, we need a defensive midfielder. We needed a, we a uh, right back that we could push. We got a Costa. Young player played there. Costa didn't play. I would have put Dax McCarty oh, on. Oh, you would have. Okay. Okay. All right, but again, fine. in my mind, because again, we go. with Chandler. By the way, we got a new coach in the national team. With here, right? Chandler and Ream, and we saw how much they got yeah. spread apart. You needed someone to plug that gap. And a 38-year-old Tim Howard is not going to be able yeah. to sprint to the top of his box like a Kaler Navis can. So you needed someone to drop back. Right, okay. And, again, Bruce Arena admitted he got outcoached. I'm very interested to see what he yeah. does against Tom but let's, let's, let's just go back to the question here. Is it, it, are there steady players coming through? Because I, I hear what Thomas says. Bruce, Bruce must win games. He's not there to develop players. But other people are there to develop players. Are those players coming through? Absolutely. Can we see a great future for Absolutely. the U.S.? Mm -hmm. I'm not convinced. Absolutely. Maybe, maybe there are players there. No, 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 because yeah, I can only you, see Kay. Pulisic as a young player coming through. The, the, the other young players, Bobby Wood, don't, don't, don't look world-class. Mm -hmm. Pulisic looks world-class. We need more of those. Where are they coming from? They, they are out there. Are they? Not Western. ready yet to just integrate them right now no, no. when you've got four games left and right. two losses. Yeah. There could be a couple once they qualify before you get to the World Cup. Someone like a Weston McKinney might be someone you put on the bench, yeah. bring in as a spot okay. starter, what Sounds he's been good. doing at Schalke. And Aren't I agree right. with you 100%. You're not going to take a 17-year-old kid and throw him to the Wolves. I'm thinking there might be a few veterans that could have come in. Fabian Johnson, he's played 10 minutes in the Bundesliga this year, and they put him out there for 90 where he was practically invisible. And it, it could have worked. Phil it knows didn't. this better than I because he does research. No, no, no and, I, and I mean this sincerely. Uh, our under-17 and our under-20 team are the best. All of our under-20 players are in Europe. Perhaps Half ever. of our under-17. 
our captain of the number 17 just signed for Benfica. Good. Benfica's been in a year. He's going to play there. So, yes, there is talent. That's we need to cultivate news. it. But people They're need to hear ready this. yet hear to play on the road we should do in a show Honduras. On this. You should, because that's, <laughs> that, that is what everyone's saying, is that is, is USA is not good enough yet, Ray, to win anything. But if the right players are coming through from the right level and they're playing at the Real Madrid's and Barca's and Benfica's, uh -huh. then there is and hope final the thought, future. Thomas, I agree with you. He was handcuffed by the situation. He didn't have time to experiment like his predecessor did uh, for a couple of years. All right, Gary Bailey, Tim Howard, in or out for the next game? In, but Tim needs to do more, and, and he can. He's, he's a wonderful goalkeeper. I know, he's not, I know age is not on his side, but he got caught out a little bit. He sort of overcovered his near post. Isn't it always the case, Gary, with goalkeepers? One what? mistake, yeah, and no, will exactly. crucify but it's him. true. It is. That's how it works. But his and he, clearances? And he made a mistake. Well, clearances aren't going to lose you Remember a game. Remember a couple of games ago, yeah. they played Brad Gazan just because they were going to be doing a lot of goal kicks, no, and they didn't trust him that's, his leg. That's not the reason you choose the keeper. You choose him not to make mistakes. The, the kicking mm -hmm. is, a, is an added benefit. He got caught a little bit on yeah. the near post. Yeah. And, you know, he knew I'm straight hoping away. that tomorrow, he knew. I, he as knew. soon as the ball yeah, whistled yeah. by him, yeah. his head went down. Yeah, and and Tim's an honest and as good as they get. I, I agree. He'll with bounce you. back. I think eh? they'll stay with He'll him. He'll bounce yeah, back tomorrow. I okay. need some big games. But you've been so negative. For what is it? Did you watch the game? Yeah. If you watch it again, you'll get even more negative, believe me. I just touch quickly on Spain against Italy in Euro qualifying. Oh, it left us knowing a couple of things. One He's thing that Italian. we already knew, Isco is amazing. But what we also saw was not the Italy that we'd expect to see. Was no. it because Spain were that yes. good or were Italy really it, under par? Italy's not as good as a lot of people were thinking, but Spain were at the operatic high note and they were led by the Maria Callas of our game in this <laughs> little bearded, bandy-legged, big-headed beauty that England certain uh, a club that I'll not mention because that would be in <laughs> the world beat is England Manchester for United. United. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, identified him at a young age but the scouting report came back and said his head's too big that's that's fact the, it, unbelievable. Isco was also turned down be, by Unai Emery back at Valencia celebrating beyond belief what this player is doing and it wasn't just him it wasn't just his school Busquets was absolutely Foot perfect and Iniesta. radiant. Iniesta was back to his best. It was a masterful performance, and Italy were chasing shadows. I mean, Italy, will, yeah. they'll be at the World Cup and they'll be lighting it up as always, and they'll be a better team. But even the coach at the end yeah. said, um, and We've and got to move on, guys, because we've got so we've gone came long. on as a oh. sub. Moretta came on as a sub. Yeah. How those for subs? The depth yeah. is, is amazing at Spain, and uh, we look forward to seeing more of them as well. Uh, Tuesday, don't miss all the common ball games that we've got here on our air. Also, don't forget that massive game in CONCACAF between Honduras and USA. These are the games from South American qualifying. It's going to be interesting because it is very tight in the table. But stay with us here on the locker room because our top goals are next. And you've got to see some of these. This segment is brought to you by the new Ford Fusion 2017. Our top goals of the week are brought to you by Ford, and we've got some beauties to show you. In Common Ball, there wasn't too many scored on match day 15, but the ones that were, were absolute peaches. This is from Christian Cueva for Peru. Look hey, how he steps right, left, and then right, just to open up a little bit of a gap, and he gets off a wonderful, wonderful shot. The lights are cried. There you go, left, right, left, gets a gap. Fires it away past the keeper. Next, Phil, it's Honduras. Alex Lopez Golazo from the edge of the box. No, absolutely. And you might say he got a lucky bounce with the ball deflecting off, but he was ready and nothing lucky about that shot. Just kind of caress and blasts into the corner, unstoppable. And it's another shot from the top of the box. Yassine Brahimi for Algeria against Zambia, Thomas. Yeah, I mean, that's just wonderful. Anytime I see a lefty open up and going through that strong side, that means his strong feet and that. Strikes a ball off yeah. the bounce on a tough field yep. as well. Yep. And for this, you, Ray? This one for me, the goalkeeper should be shot. But <laughs> apart from that, this wonderful lad called Gilbert Alvarez gets all of his computations in a nanosecond put rate. He's got so many equations to do in his head. And look at this. This is absolutely a divine arc that's unstoppable. Gilbert Alvarez. Yeah, we're going to be a bit cheeky now as well because we have an own Golazo. It came in the Chile Paraguay game and it was Arturo Vidal. Check this one out. You'll he never will score not want a better to see one. Again. Nope. Best goal of the week by far. <laughs> This segment was brought to you by the new Ford Fusion 2017. 
Okay, it's play at home time. We have a fun question for the panel and for all of you at home as well. Ranking your top five national teams in world football right now. And that includes all of the regions, Ray. Who have you gone for? Uh, Brazil, unquestionably for me, playing the most beautiful football, first of all. Uh, emphatic going forward, radiant skill. Players like Coutinho coming off the bench and defensively, they're, they're wonderful Get to watch. Get to the bottom two, right? Spain, <laughs> fantastic. On. Uh, uh, of course, Ooh. Germany always, and uh, at the bottom, Belgium and Switzerland. Switzerland, Switzerland, eight They're no. on their way up. <laughs> and beaten Portugal. I just wanted to stick it to a Portuguese uh, producer here. Above Portugal, beaten Portugal, yeah. the Swiss. <laughs> okay, Thomas Rungan, who have you gone for? I went with the best teams in their respective confederations. Okay. And it's time, I think, that one of the minnows, so to speak, is is Ooh. going to win a World Cup. And if you look at, at, at results, Group of Death 2014, Uruguay, England, Italy, and Costa Rica. Costa Rica wins, loses in the semis against the Netherlands. Sooner or later, one of those teams. South Korea, by the way, loses in the semis two World Cups good ago team. That as was well. A good team. You've got Mexico. Japan there too. Well, Japan was uh, Japan. one of the first to qualify. No, yeah, yeah but absolutely. To win a World Cup, like absolutely. Top five in the world. Yeah, why not? <laughs> why not? Why not? Oh. <laughs> Mind you, Holland can't play uh, you football. Know what's oh, so oh, 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 Below the belt, Bailey. What I'm trying to say is those regions have one or two teams that sooner or later, this might be the time, can go very far and win a World Cup. I sincerely believe okay. that. You're going last for that, Gary Bailey. Phil Shane, who are you I, going I'm, I'm going to agree with Ray in regards to Brazil, and it's amazing we can consider where they were after two or three rounds of qualifying. What Chiche has done is come in is to reinvigorate, to re-energize, and still stick with some of the old war horses. But that's a very European top five from you. It can be, because in my mind, Argentina doesn't deserve to be there. Uh, the one, the hardest part for me was anybody, Belgium yeah. and France, but Belgium actually just beat them this past summer. They look to be a little bit more solid. France just struggled against Luxembourg, but I think there's a pretty big drop-off after those top five. Okay, Belgium is like what Spain used to be. They, they, everybody loves them and they don't do yeah. anything. Mm -hmm. but, but they may be like Spain. Their time is just about to come. That's what he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Gary. I've got very similar ones, but I've got Argentina in there as well. And I can't believe none of you have Argentina. You're romantic. This, no, not romantic. Why can't you believe they nobody's got Argentina? They have made three finals. And Copa what happened in those three they finals? They lost on penalties. They didn't yeah, lose but, in no, normal but How many of those finals yeah, did they but lose? They, they lost on penalties but in normal time. how many did they time. lose, sorry, <laughs> <in> those three <laughs> finals? You name me who else has been to three finals. Who is that consistent? Brazil, <laughs> they got beat 7-1 at home. Germany's only won one tournament. They didn't win Euros. They didn't win Euros. They got they got done there so by you know France. But you're, you're saying Chile, if you don't win, it doesn't Chile matter. Finish, Chile Come won on, those Argentina two. have uh, are probably pound for pound the best team in the world with Messi, Dybala, Icardi, Di Maria. Yeah, but oh, you're not showing much. They Gary. are coming it's, good. They've got it. You call so yourself an Englishman back in the Argentina. I've never heard anything like that. A disgrace. I can't go with England. Why can't you go with England? No, well they're not good enough. That's why they're almost as bad as Holland. Well, the Falklands. No, I think okay. going to go to the last day if they're going to make it, yes or no, off the play, play playoffs. That's fine. They're the most unbalanced team right but now. Once they get crazy, to Russia. Unbalanced team and most reliant on Messi still, which becomes like they're playing Juventus game after game after game. I'm just, Three players around him. He's not found a method, some power yes. or Messi, to get yes. rid of the ball quicker no and have better Tell movement, like Brazil right well, now. We'll, we'll see how they evolve. The the we'll see the how they evolve here on Bean Spots in these common ball qualifiers. We will be taking a quick pause, but first we have a little what I love for you. And even I have not seen these because they've been put together by our production team. Oh, and look at this. Wow. This is wow. a little bit of Taconathos. The other meaning of Taconathos, That's Gary, is heels. big high heels. High heels. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not looking at the high oh. heels, to be honest with you. Uh, <laughs> to be fair. Looking at the ball, right? But Those no, no, I'm just saying, right? I'm just being honest. Uh, but great skill from the girl. Absolutely <laughs> wonderful. Uh, check this one out. This is uh, Neymar. Neymar Hello. asking for her oh, phone number. Oh, hey. <laughs> cheeky, <laughs> number. cheeky, cheeky, <laughs> <laughs> Like a bit of a uh, Brazilian swagger there. Uh, Stick Marcelo around with us here. Uh, <laughs> I remember we them this time, yeah. We have some picks where we come back. I don't want to know these stories from these guys, but I'm sure I'm going to hear them. Stay with us. 70% of our spectators were women. Remember that, those days? <laughs> Welcome 
welcome back to the locker room. Now it's time for Bean Picks, presented to you by Soccer.com. And we've decided to pick our combo ball games that we've got coming up on Tuesday. And we're asking the panel what they think. So first, you, Phil Shane, Bolivia against Chile. No draws allowed. Uh, no draws allowed, which is hard. I wouldn't have had a draw on this one anyway. And I just think Chile is in such dire shape right now. And then to go to altitude, Bolivia, after they lost the court of arbitration, no chance in anything. This is their one chance to be a spoiler and knock Chile out, and I think they're going to do it. Do you agree, Thomas? Yes, I do. Bloody it, hell. Yeah. <laughs> we agree? Yeah. I, I think they're, they're, uh, there's something wrong with this team. Somehow the last three or four big tournaments have gotten there. Mm. PC, I think, has lost this team Agreed. a little bit if I look at the body language. Gary? I'm going to say Chile because they're desperate. They have to get a result no matter what here. They're in danger of going out if they, if, if they lose this because they've got Brazil away in their final match and they'll get nothing there. So there's too many big names with Claudio Bravo, Alexis Sanchez that have to prove that they can play. So I'm going for Chile for the away win. Who are you going for, Ray? Altitude, schmaltitude. Chi, 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 le, le, le. Win, win, win. Chile. Okay, so it's two versus two on that one. Let's move on to the next game. We have Argentina against Venezuela. Phil Shane, who have you got? Um, I would love to say Venezuela, especially after their heroic performance uh, this past round. I don't see them being able to go into Argentina and come away with points. They'll be tested. They'll impress. This is a young generation already playing for the next Copa America. But this World Cup, forget about it. Argentina. Thomas, can you agree with Phil again? Uh, yeah. Uh, this is not a must win for them, but under San Paolo's second game mm. now, a few more days in terms of training. Are we going to see his real high press that he's done with Chile so well? Does he have the players with that? I don't think he does. Di Maria, Di Bala, <laughs> Messi, with all due respect, and Icardi are not the guys that Chile has. So be interested to see how he's going to put this team together. You've got to believe Jerry, in these you've players. Got to be going I'm going 5 0 Argentina. Oh, okay. I'm going for, and San Paolo will get this team working, and everyone's going to come back and say, they're now my favorites for the World Cup. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they are favourites as well, right? He's just praising Farinas, the Venezuelan <laughs> goalkeeper, like yeah. crazy. He's just defending his Argentine Five nothing, pick. I'll go six nothing. <laughs> oh, Argentina. <laughs> okay, Argentina. everyone agreed on that one. Next, Ecuador, Peru. Uh, this is a tough one. They both need it. This would be the draw. But we're not allowed to pick no. draws, and I think that the Peru actually has the momentum. Of course you would. Your wife's Peru. I don't want to sleep on the couch. Um, I'll just stick Peru. I, I think they're actually playing the well. Phil doesn't want to sleep on the couch. Thomas, who are you going for? Um, what team are we talking about, Ray? Ecuador, Ecuador or Peru. Peru. Oh, that's interesting. I really fancy Peru, quite frankly. I mm, really do. I think team. Ecuador, though, under so much pressure to get three points, <laughs> they might be out of it. Excuse I go me. with the home team, Ecuador. Okay. Yeah. The, 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 the Valencia, brother. I'm going with the home team, the Ecuador. Ecuador. <laughs> Gary, yeah, I'm going to go with Ecuador as well. They've beaten <laughs> Chile at home. They've beaten Uruguay at home. They've only lost two of 14 at home. They're, they're a good, solid team. Right? Ecuador, for sure. Yeah. Sorry, Phil. Paraguay? <laughs> Uruguay, Uruguay, Uruguay. Uruguay. Oh, Paraguay, you worry. But Paraguay at home is going to win. Mm. Seriously? Uruguay for me. I think they'll come out and. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Show, Uruguay show is such a decent team there. Diego Godin yeah, and company. Such a, de a, a, de a, a decent on, team is not going to win, believe me. Such <laughs> a decent <laughs> team. They have to be indecent. Oh, okay. <laughs> Suarez, and, Suarez and Cavani <laughs> up front exactly. should be the difference. All right, now we yeah. will move on to what I was supposed to go with then, which is Brazil and Colombia. Um, uh, Brazil's not going to lose anything. This will be in Colombia. The, they're going to try and use the heat, try and use the humidity. They're going to try and use Neymar and Jesus, <laughs> the, and Brazil wins. Thomas? Yeah, Brazil, to me, we talked about it. You know, some people are saying they're going to win the World Cup. They are the best team on the planet. And I shouldn't say that. Germany still needs to be beaten by somebody in a big tournament. But Brazil right now, with a triangle, in my opinion, the best triangle, Jesus, Neymar, and Coutinho. They're on Gary. fire. Okay, I've got to go against you. James comes back. They need the points. Brazil are really qualified. I'm going to go for a shock win here for you Colombia. You're going for Colombia, okay. And maybe you picked Brazil earlier on. I think maybe you're changing to step apart. <laughs> Ray Hudson. Ray, Brazil. Okay, okay. Don't make... Uh, make sure you do your own picks. We want <laughs> to have your weekly match predictions. You can do so at being picks.com for the chance to win $100 from soccer.com and you'll get your name mentioned on air of course so visit beandpicks.com make your weekly match predictions and get the chance to win a $100 gift card from soccer.com don't miss a minute tomorrow Ali Krieger, Carlos Bocanegra and Jimmy Conrad will be joining Kev Egan for Honduras against the US until then hey. adios just to add a note here. Go on, here. USA. Go on, USA. Pass, Go on, USA. Come on, USA. Passive pass accuracy is a low 